Hello everyone. I'd like to spend a, a little time today and talk to you about the concept of pass and how they can be used in filters for working in large assemblies. More specifically, you may have worked with a very large assembly, but your work on a specific uh, situation deals with a particular component. In this case, it's going to be with a fuel tank. But, you know, think of it in this context of like a large ship where I have a rudder and I want to work with just the components around it. I don't need to load the entire ship. Now, in my example, I'm working with an excavator, which is indeed still a very large assembly, and I only want to work right around the fuel tank. How can I do that? Well, we can take advantage of relations within the design to capture context, and we do that through paths. Now, let me show you how that works. Here, we're working in the product structure editor. We could be working in the product structure explorer as well. I'll search for a fuel tank in this case that I want as my focus of my work. And once I filter down to a 6W tags, I'll get that tank and I'll search for its, I'll activate its relations. So here we see the tank. We can move up and look through its parents, find all the parents up the tree that are involved with this particular component. And we end up at the excavator that, you know, that is containing this tank somewhere in its structure. Once I have that, I can take advantage of paths. So I'll tell the system to find a path. Well, initially it, it automatically puts in the excavator fuel tank because that was my point of interest. But what I can do now is select the excavator itself, which is added to the path search. I do a find. The system returns a current network of connections. It also returns what we call structure path. And those are the ones I'm interested in. They're only dealing with parent-child relationships. I'll drag them into the product structure editor and we get that context captured. The system is only opening the fuel tank because that's still my area of my initial focal point of my work here. So I've only, that's all I'm really loading technically into session. But now I have the context to work with. Now having that context means I can take advantage of filters. So I need to select the tank first so I can activate the filters. If I do that and I add a filter to the, vo to the volumes, a volume filter, the system brings up the volume query in the composer. And I'm going to choose to use a proximity filter and just tell the system I want to grab everything within, say, 8 millimeters of the tank, this fuel tank, inside this excavator. And only those components. So we'll update the filter. We notice it updates that over here in my volume filter stack. I'll apply that to my stack and then apply that to the product structure editor. The system then looks at what uh, the, the overall context the excavator and now can load only those components that are within eight millimeters of this fuel tank, which likely most parts that it's literally directly up against is what I'm interested in. So the system brings back only those components. I see an oil, you know, there's a hydraulic oil tank here. There's the actual body of it that the tank is sitting in. So I see all these components. I can section and, and, and get a relation, see the relationships, but I'm not encumbered by the entire assembly of the excavator in my session here to do my analysis or markups or whatever it is I'm doing downstream of this activity. So here, for example, I'll just do a quick measurement off of the section. And, you know, so I have, I have a, an uncluttered view of this, the information I need. Well, I hope this tip was useful and uh, you find it useful in your daily sessions. Thanks for your time.